Remember when you were looking to buy some of this last April? Well, if you're a buyer in the Denver metro area right now of Colorado, specifically the South Denver metro area in Douglas County, it feels an awful lot like that. Low inventory, low interest rates, and high buyer demand are making for a hot real estate market. What's going on with our Colorado house prices? We're going to be discussing that next. Hi, my name is Peggy Durstoff and I'm a real estate consultant with HomeSmart here in the South Denver metro area of Colorado, specifically Highlands Ranch in Douglas County. And today we're going to be discussing what is going on with our Colorado house prices. Now it's been a little chilly of late and we're finally getting the snow that we need here in Colorado, but the real estate market has been very, very hot, especially if you're looking at buyer demand and buyer activity. On the flip side, seller inventory is so low that on an average priced single family home, we're seeing appreciation much higher than we expected for 2021. Let's go ahead and take a look at what's happening with this market in terms of the numbers. These are areas I like to look at when I'm watching the market to see which way it's going to trend. So let's take a peek at the numbers in the South Denver metro area and some of the metrics that we try to measure in an effort to see what's going to be coming down the pipeline for us in 2021. So the first thing I always like to look at is new listings. Why new listings? Well, new listings speak to supply. How many homes for sale? In January of 2020, that number was 4,520. In January of 2021, it was 4,114. That was a 9% decrease year over year. Now, along with that, I like to look at what is the median house price. In January of 2020 was 415,000. Now that jumped to 455,000 in January of 2021. That's a 9.6% increase. Interesting fact, that is actually a slower increase than what we saw last fall when we looked at October of 2020 over October of 2019, where we saw an 11% increase in house prices. So we're seeing that house prices are still increasing, but they're increasing at a slower rate. That's good news for buyers and something that sellers want to keep their eye on. Now, pending home sales is another thing I look at. So we look at the supply of listings and then we look to see how many of those go under contract. In January of 2020, that number was 4,160. In January of 2021, that number jumped to 4,340. So that's a 4.3% increase. Look at those, we look at closed volume. So in January 2020, 3,092 listings closed. In January of 2021, 2,998 listings closed. So that was a drop of about 3%. Now that could be for several reasons. One, again, remember, just because it went under contract doesn't mean you're going to go to a closing. Uh, the buyer situation could change. They, you know, they can't buy the home. Uh, they could find something in the home during their due diligence that they can't live with, or maybe they weren't aware of certain HOA rules that they can't adhere to. Um, also, we might be seeing an extended closing because the sellers are taking their time trying to find and go under contract on their replacement home, or they're waiting for the new build to be ready. So again, so these numbers are a little bit skewed. What I have seen, honestly, is if a home falls back onto the market, it's back under contract within a day or two. It's not taking weeks for that to happen. And in some cases, you never even see it come back on the market. The first buyer falls out, but there's backup offers in place, which is a good strategy if you're a seller to keep that in mind with your agent. Now, besides you know, new listings and what's gone under contract and what the median price is. Two numbers I really pay attention to are days in the market and weeks of inventory. Now days in the market is defined by the time the seller has said, yep, go ahead. I'm ready to show my home to the time they find an offer that they like and they sign and they go under contract. 
So that's the days in the market. Back in January 2020, that number was 25 days. It took 25 days on average for a seller to, once they put their home on the market, to find a buyer's offer that they liked and go under contract. Anybody want to make a guess at what happened in January 2021? Yeah, it was a whopping six days. Can you believe it? Six days. Wow. That means if you put your home on the market, say on a Wednesday or Thursday, by that following Tuesday, you could be under contract already. That's moving real fast. And that really speaks to the high buyer demand. Other number I like to look at is weeks of inventory. Weeks of inventory, when we talk to realtors, when you, you talk to an agent, um, I like to personally deal with months, but you'll hear that anywhere between five to seven months of inventory is considered a normal market. It's not a buyer's market, not a seller's market. If you go over seven months worth of inventory or homes for sale, then that could potentially lead to a buyer's market. There's a lot of inventory and you're waiting for a buyer to come along. However, on the flip side, if it's below five months worth of inventory, then we say it's more of a seller's market. So back in January of 2020, the weeks of inventory was six weeks. So basically a month and a half. So as you know, then that's under that five month mark, which means, yeah, it's a seller's market. It means that it would take about six weeks for all the homes that are currently on the market to disappear, to be sold and gone. Make a guess for what happened in January, 2021. Go ahead, stick your comment down below. I'd love to see your answer. And give yourself a pat on the back if you said it was a whopping one week. Wow. One week. That means it would take only one week for all of the inventory to disappear. That's not a seller's market. That's an extreme seller's market. And that, again, is keeping our prices up. That lack of supply and that high demand. Now, one of the things driving this buyer demand, there's actually a few things happening, but one of them is, of course, the low interest rates. Now, back in March of 2020, interest rates were like 3.65. They dropped to 2.65 in January um, of 2021. So what this is allowing the buyer to do is actually buy a more expensive house and yet still stay within their budget because the interest rates are so very low. The other thing is we have millennials who have come of age. They're now hitting 30, a little over 30, and looking to buy that first home. If you're a buyer right now, one of the biggest things I hear from my buyers is they're worried about having enough money for the down payment. Now I did a video on down payment money, and you can check it out here, but also, for watching this, I have a free PDF for you down below in the description. Go ahead and click on the link. It's a four page document showing you all the different places you can get down payment money. There's a lot of down payment money out there and depending upon your loan structure, there's money basically waiting for you. So check into it. And if you want, if you're in my area, please feel free to text or call me and we can brainstorm some different strategies for you. On the flip side, if you're a seller in today's market or you're thinking about making a move in today's market, also please reach out to me. Um, I'm happy to brainstorm with you. We have a couple of products at HomeSmart that will allow you to compete when you go to buy your next home and not worry about having to sell your home first. So um, if I can help in any way, that's why I'm here. Thank you as always for watching. I so appreciate you guys. If you liked what you heard, please give it a thumbs up and go ahead and consider subscribing and hit the bell because this time each week when I create a new video and post it, you'll be the first one to know and I'll give you tips and tools that you can use in today's real estate market. Have a wonderful day, and I will see you on the next video.
So that's basically it, really, looking at January of 2020 versus January of 2021. It's now February 2021, and the projection really is that this will, this kind of market will continue for a little bit. Um, what will happen in 2022? That's really the big question mark because all of that forbearance that's been put aside. That's really where a lot of our question is. Will it be a repeat of 08, 09? I don't, I don't see that because qualifying for loans today is still difficult. Qualifying for loans has been difficult since 2013. So anyone in forbearance now who bought a home back then really, you know, you, you had to put money down. It's not going to be just a tiny little bit and, or, you know, you fog a mirror and we get you a home like we saw back in the day. So for right now, I'll keep monitoring this. I'll keep reporting on this and we'll keep an eye on things like days in the market, weeks of inventory, um, sold prices, Right, so that we can monitor and see where the market is trending. So thank you so very much for watching till the end. I really appreciate you guys. Please, if you liked what you saw, consider subscribing and don't forget to hit the bell so that you're notified each week when I post another video on tips and tools that you can use in our Denver Metro market, as well as reporting on the market itself. Thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next video. Have a great day. Thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next video.